morning. Welcome to The Big Questions, live from Manchester. I'm Nicky Campbell. Yesterday, the rally staged by the English Defence League in Denmark to launch a European counter-jihad movement was attended by only 300 people from five countries. 4,000 people demonstrated against them. But experts on far-right movements said the meeting had more strategic significance than its numbers suggest. Our first big question, is Britain too complacent about the far right? Tommy Robinson, the EDL's leader, says he's going to continue to expose the threat from Islamism to the culture of the UK and Europe. The average uh, age of turning to prostitution is just 15, despite it being illegal to pay for sex with somebody younger than 18. She looked older is a defence, unless the girl is 13 or younger. So critics say the age limit needs to be raised to 21 to protect young people. Our next big question, should it be illegal to pay for sex with a young adult? Former cold girl Helen Wood says it would have stopped her going on the game at 19, which resulted in a notorious liaison with Wayne Rooney. Welcome everybody to the big questions this morning. Now, yesterday's meeting of European anti-Islamist groups in Urhus, organised by the English Defence League, was judged a damp squib in the papers this morning. But the thousands who staged a counter-demonstration think we should not underestimate them. They say Europe needs to learn from the horrendous killing spree by Norwegian right-winger Anders Bering Breivik, whose trial begins in two weeks. Is Britain too complacent about the far right? Tommy Robinson, the leader of the EDL, is here. And on, on a... Morning. Morning. On a previous uh, rally, this was at Tower Hamlets, you said, I just want to see exactly where you're coming from here, you said every single Muslim watching this, on 7-7, you got away with killing and maiming British citizens. You got away with it. You had better understand that we have built a network from one end of this country to the other end and we will not tolerate it. And the Islamic community will feel the full force of the English Defence League if we see any of our citizens killed, maimed or hurt on British soil again. Yep. Basically, that we will highlight it, with, as we've done from day one, peacefully protesting, bring it to the media attention and put pressure on the Islamic community to deal with the Islamists with, with within respect, the that doesn't sound peaceful. That sounds very threatening. Well, it wasn't. It was peaceful. It was peaceful. And it's, a, and it's not a threat. It's a promise. It's, we will continue to do what we're doing. The Islamic community have got Islamist organisations in every one of them. They're not dealing with them. We, we now have more Islamic extremists in Britain than we've ever had. And it's spreading like a wildfire. What would you mean by full force? By full force. Taken to the streets in as many numbers as we can. What do you mean by every single Muslim watching I mean, this? I mean every single Muslim. It is your duty to deal with the extremists within your community. Stop brushing it under the carpet, pretending it's not there. Now, people say you're just a bunch of thugs. Um, you came out of the football thug culture. When you headbutted a fellow EDL member, Alan McKee, what was all that about? Well, that uh, about was he had a com it, it was combat 18. I stood up on stage. Right. We, had a, we had a breaking point in our movement where we had neo-Nazis trying to attach themselves to what we stand for. So I took the opportunity to stand on stage, call them out, name them. When I got off stage, I was confronted by people wearing combat 18 t-shirts. At which point I headbutted him, because right. he was Sikh hiling and shouting and shouting abuse. Mm -hmm. and, and then, and then when I got back to the coach, I was confronted by another 30 Nazis. I get many death threats on a weekly basis by Nazis. We've done more to confront na is Nazism and Islamism. So are you an anti-Nazi movement? I am. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And Islamism and Nazism are opposite sides of the same coin. They're identical. They're both fascist ideologies. But Nazism's been defeated. Islamism hasn't. Well, it's interesting because Nick Griffin from the BNP described you and your organisation as good-hearted morons. Nick Griffin, yeah, that's coming from Nick Griffin, yeah? And Andy well, he said, likes what you do. He, yeah. says, he says, and I'll go on with a quote, he said it in February 2011. They're trying to do something, he says of you, mm. and the good thing is they've politicised a whole generation of youngsters. Well, you used to be in the BNP, didn't you? Yeah, in 2004. When, yeah. when you drown in, you clutch at straws. We've, we looked around. Before I joined the BNP, I didn't know non-white people couldn't join. I was a member for 12 months on the leak list. If you check the leak list, I didn't renew my membership in 2004, uh, in 2005. And from him... You thought the BNP was a multiracial organisation? Well, I didn't know that non-white people couldn't join it. I didn't know Nick Griffin used to be leader of National Front. I didn't know he was a Nazi. And for him yeah. saying we're morons, I watched him on Question Times. So good-hearted we'll morons? Yeah, well, we, I watched him on Question Times. So we'll know who the good-hearted moron is. Mm. Well, answer. how dangerous do you believe the EDL are? I think uh, Stephen or Tommy or whatever is, uh, and his organisation are extremely dangerous. I think they peddle hate, they peddle misconceptions, they peddle myths at a time when we've seen spikes in Islamophobia, race hate. We see attacks across the United Kingdom. Have you been threatened? 
I've been threatened, threatened many times on Twitter. We have uh, uh, live cases. I've been uh, threatened with violence against myself. Uh, but, it, but this isn't about me. This is about a broader issue, which is, as a society, we have your organisation, Tommy, Stephen, yeah. which is peddling hate, which is hurting, alienating. You are denigrating a whole community. Over and over again, it's been made very, very clear by the leadership within your organisation, this is about all Muslims, this is about Islam, not Islamism, and I'm sure you can even define Islamism. Tom, Tom, I've grown up in Luton. Some of the best people I've met through growing up are Muslim. Some of my mates are Muslim. You had Butch Vassell on this show last week. I was out with his son on Thursday night, OK? I don't hate all Muslims. Muslims are the first victims of Islam and extremist Islam. That's what's happening. I don't hate Muslims at all. And, and, and I've, I've said that from day one. When it comes to peddling hate, you just said you've been threatened on Twitter. OK, well, I've had an armed guard for my family for a week. I've had threats to decapitate my children's head. I've been in hospital with bruising on the brain. I've had eight stitches in my lip. I get confronted and attacked on a weekly basis. So don't, I, I don't need anyone to tell me about being threatened and where it comes to from being threatened. My answer. Do you, do, you, do you not think, for a second, that you are part of an organisation, and your organisation you were in Denmark yesterday, yes. and you are bedfellows with people who are saying that we want to outlaw the Quran, we want to outlaw the hijab, we want to, no. we want to deport Muslims from Europe, we want to exclude them, we want to pay them to have governments send them out of Europe. You are trying to become now a soft face, which is appeasing hatred against Muslims and Islamophobia. Let me Most ask you something. The people that um, ha share, to a greater or lesser extent, some of the concerns that uh, Tommy uh, attempts to articulate, do they not count? Yeah, I? I think the concerns are important, and I think we have a major problem in this country, which is there has been no proper debate about what is the nature of Islam. Islam, as far as my understanding is concerned, and almost every Muslim I've met, Islam is inclusive, it supports women's Wahibi, rights, Wahibi it, it gave, it gave women's... Wahhabi sex of Islam? Wahhabism? I have no idea what that... Extreme what sex, Saudi-funded sex. They're, they're peaceful. This, this is the United Kingdom. Yeah. This is the United Kingdom. Yeah. We're talking about Muslims and Islam in the United Kingdom. Which we are inclusive. Working. Hold on a second. We are inclusive. We're tolerant and supportive and encouraging of other faiths. In Islam, it says la ikra afidin. That means there's no compulsion in religion. So we, we, Islam is not about oppression. It's actually about providing freedom for people and freedom from fear. Fear, the kind of fear that your organisation peddles. Fear that Islam peddles towards us I in many ways. And you're, say, you're saying this, there'll be thousands of people, millions of people sitting at home from working class backgrounds who live in towns like Luton Town who don't see it integrating, who don't see it as being peaceful, who see hostility. My children... Sorry, who don't see what as integrating? Islam, it's not integrating society. So this is an Islamic problem, not an Islamist problem. No, no, so Isla you're not talking... Isla no, no, Islam. you are not talking about political extremism. You are talking about Muslims generally. No, I'm and you've about, said it now I'm, again. I'm talking about Islam. I'm not talking about Muslims. I'm talking about Islam is failing to integrate. If you look across Europe... But there are millions... Can I just say, yeah, there, there are, are millions of people who perfectly well integrate. You, yeah, you, 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 think, you think all Muslims, do you not, are like Anjem Chowdhury no, and that mob? How, how, how can you just say that? I've just told you. I've it's, the same the, it's the same as somebody people. assuming that all, you've just all told, white people are like yeah, you. How, how, can you just tell me, how, how can you just tell me that I think all Muslims are like Anjem Chowdhury? I've just said some of the best people through growing up I've met are Muslim. Some of my best mates through growing up are Muslim. Yeah, Islam. Islam is in the 7th century ideology. It's not just me that thinks it's failing. Every single... The far, the fastest... Well, hang on, let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. The, far, the fastest growing political parties in every single country in Europe are anti-Islam political parties. Whether you like it or not, it's happening. People are fed up with what's going on. Islam needs to evolve. It needs to modernise. And, it, and, and, it, and it's not... It's, you can't call me a racist or fascist for picking out problems within Matt the Islamic Goodwin. ideology. Matt Goodwin, um, how, how significant are the EDL? Are, are they, in a way, changing the discourse in this country? Well, they are a significant movement and they're representing concerns and grievances that are in society. I think, on the other hand, probably lots of people who are watching the show may feel concerned about the way in which organisations like the English Defence League tend to have a lot of slippage in the way that they talk about Islam. So what, an organisation that started talking about militant Islamism now openly talks about Muslims in general. So let's just... Let's talk about Islam again. Well, OK, OK, but let's, let's just be absolutely clear. We have to be okay. very precise in our terminology let's be absolutely, it's a sensitive issue. Let's be absolutely clear. When we look at the survey evidence and we look at all of the research that's been done, the vast majority of Muslims in this country do not endorse terrorism or suicide bombing. Yeah, yeah. The vast... <laughs> the, vast, the vast majority of Muslims in this country feel strongly attached to their country and their neighbourhood. Okay, the vast majority of Muslims in this country do not endorse things like honour killings. So, that, that you're all going to. 
In this is in okay. So, yeah, for Muslims, so here's here's, it, here's the problem. Only, here's, under Sharia law, Muslim women are treating second-rate citizens. Here's they get fifty percent less of a man. Well, they I'm have their. Woman, I'm not a citizen. No, we, but you'll get fifty percent less than that of a man in a Sharia law court. Well, that's not on in British. Tommy, you're you're having having oh, really wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Shyster. What I find really interesting about your organisation is I was looking at your website yesterday, yeah. and you you're trying to say that you're a human rights organisation. I mean, I find that quite farcical. What, what you, you basically, your organisation does peddle hate, you peddle misinformation. Um, last month, in March, two Asian men were beaten to a pulp by four men from Yorkshire who claim they, are, they are sympathise with the EDL. Sympathize they have, been, the they have the actually gone to prison. Where's the evidence they this? Have, Well, this is what they said. It, came, it actually was discussed in court. They've gone to prison. Okay. Now, two weeks ago in Salford, not that far from here, mm. uh, a black woman was walking in broad daylight, two o'clock in the afternoon. She's pushing her child in a pram. A man uh, racially abused her, used sexual language and threw acid at her. Well, now, racism is, is very this? much a reality okay. of people's lives. But Shai Shaister, the other well, side of this is that, that do, the, do, I suppose the question some people ask is, do the Muslim community need to be, do more to separate themselves from their extremist wings, Muslim communities, you talk from their we, extremist you, wings? You, there, are, there are young men who want to kill their fellow Britons. There are those poppy burners. Now, what do you think of all those people? I think they're extremists. I think they're an absolute Muslim? disgrace, just like I think you're an extremist. Okay. Well, I'm Simple as that. You, you, you talk about human rights. The European Court of Human Rights done an in-depth study in 2004 and they found that Sharia law is incompatible with Western freedoms and democracies due to their views on homosexuals, their views on women and their views on infidels. That's all the non-Muslims over here. But if, you, so if you're a defender of liberal values, as you seem to be betraying yourself, why in a recent Channel 4 documentary did you throw items at the police and abuse an Asian security guard Take about Norway yeah. and you were impersonating Anders Breivik. No, 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 you see what you why, why do your members I'm, wear I'm, I'm toy, toy, is this true, toy pig masks and carry bacon? It's no. liberal values, it's no. hardly Shirley Williams, I'm is it? I'm glad you pointed that out. When I had my hood up and I had goggles on, this is, where we, this is what we're up against as an organisation. I said ribbit because I looked like a frog, because I had goggles on and I was drunk. I didn't say Breivik, they put a subtitle as Breivik. I didn't say Brevik, I said Ribbit. So, and taking that out of context, a lot of those things, if you know the story behind what had happened, it's not the way it looked. It, 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 what are these pig masks all about? I don't know, I don't wear a pig mask. I don't wear a pig mask. The, the, but the, the, the point is more important than this, yeah. and, and I'll tell you why, Stephen, because firstly, within society, and one thing you're not recognising, you're worried about the Islamisation of this I'm, country. Not just I'm you're, worried, no, 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 a no it's okay. It's not, it's all right. Look, you're worried about the Islamisation of this country, you're worried about the Islamisation of Europe, because of fear. Fear that doesn't need to exist. If you understood the Islamic contribution to this society, arts, science, no, I'll tell you what, maths, I'm totally on history, about it because I look at music, I look literature, at Egypt, hold on a second, the Renaissance. Look at all these Islamic countries where Christians are being persecuted and massacred. You cannot look, you cannot, you cannot judge, you cannot judge on 44 a other countries. You cannot judge, Stephen, you cannot judge a religion by the misguided actions of a few individuals. It's not a few individuals, it's 44 countries. It's 44 countries. And, and we're here talking about the far right. Can someone define far right to me? Please. The old, the old politics. Matt, yeah. Can you define Matt, far right? Matt is Matt's one of the <laughs> experts yeah. on that very thing. Right, yeah. there, are, there, are, there, are, there are two key things that far right groups yeah. share. Okay, firstly, they reject or they undermine what representative liberal democracy is all about. Now, a liberal representative democracy accepts that a plurality of views is legitimate. We should support those views. We should allow those views. Okay. Okay. And and I think what many people would feel is that your organisation and the way in which you, you campaign mm -hmm. is automatically discounting the views of Muslims and the rights okay. of Muslims to hold those views. But secondly, yeah. what far-right groups share, I mean, you, I'm sure you would say you're not the same organisation as, say, I don't know, the American Nazi no, Party, what, no, right? Because there's, there's a lot of variation within those parties. Hold on. Yeah. But what they also share, ultimately, is a rejection of human equality. And I, I would guess that many people who are watching the show would feel that your organisation is no longer talking about militant Islam. Okay. You're just talking about Muslims. Okay. Well, I'd say, you'd say, you'd say well, far right. Jamie and Abra in a you'd second. say far right. I say we've got a Sikh, a Sikh, a Sikh division. I serve the BNG. A, Jew, a Jewish division, a Hindu division. And, and excuse me, so, sorry. And, and Matthew's an expert on the far right, yeah? Matthew, you're from Kettering. 98% no, Christian. Not. You was brought up in Kettering. No, I wasn't. Where was you brought up? Chiswell Green. Chiswell Green. Well, what's the population of Muslims there? 
It's, it's non-existent. There's I live in Manchester. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm more, in Manchester more than familiar no, 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 with that. What I'm saying is, where you've been brought up, yeah, there's been no Muslims, there's been no immigration. Where, where, where I've been brought up, when your children go to a school where other children at that school's fathers are teaching them hatred due to their Islamic extremist views, then you can be an expert. Because all these experts which are doing all these studies and reading all these books, they're out of touch with reality. Jamie Bartlett, are you out of touch? Are too many politicians out of touch with what he perceives as his reality, Tommy Robinson? I think so. I mean, I think Re clearly one, one of the, one of the reasons groups like the English Defence League and all across Europe various forms of far-right parties are growing is partly a feeling that especially left-wing parties that should have been representing the working class no longer really understand what it's like to live in a, actually in a multicultural society. I mean, Tommy can say, you know, I live in Luton, I know what it's actually like, you're from Westminster, you've actually got no idea. But the question here is about whether we're complacent. You know, for all the bluster that, that, that Tommy and the EDL can present each week and they get lots of media coverage, there's not actually many of them. Most of them are online on Facebook and on forums and all the rest of it. They can't really get more than four or five hundred people out in the streets. Look at the BNP in the UK. Polls, what, one percent, two percent. And look what happens across the rest of Europe. In France, the mm. Front National are polling at 20 percent. This is really key, isn't it? There's no, is it, Matt, there's no, there never really has been, mostly in the 30s, there's a sort of brief, brief shining moment, if you want to call it that, but no, nothing much beyond that. There's been no tradition of electoral success in this country for far-right parties, hasn't there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of that has to do with the system that we have. I mean, we are just as concerned as our European neighbours about the core far-right issues, and I don't think those issues should be dismissed or discounted. I think those issues need to be talked about, and that is probably the only point of convergence that, that, that you and I would have. But, but, but I would also say, in Britain particularly, because of the failure of parties like the BNP and before the BNP, the National Front, we've tended to be extra dismissive about the far right. We've dismissed supporters of the far right as a lunatic fringe who don't deserve to, to have their grievances it's talked about and I, and I don't necessarily not, think that's the... It's because we're far right, that, not far right, that we've been successful. It's because people don't want to vote for the BNP and groups like that because the average person that's joined the English Defence League is an average man. There's quite a lot of crossover so between, between the two, isn't there? Between the BNP and the EDL, there's quite a lot of crossover. Yep. Well, the top, I mean, the reality of the situation is the, top of the, the type of narratives that these parties are offering around Islam and around immigration are very similar. Jamie's study has shown that EDL supporters are not just concerned about Islam, they're concerned about immigration more generally. I think a lot of people are concerned about immigration well, more generally. Think, Albert, Albert, do you want to come in here? And then Guy in a second. This the, I've, I have a huge problem with the way the debate's been defined at the moment because the implication seems to be that there needs to be some sort of proactive steps taken by government to stop people from expressing their opinions. Mm -hmm. This is effectively what we're talking about. You can't say this because I don't agree with you. And every opportunity that the EDL is having to, taking to express themselves, the reaction is so it's so strong to this well actually what we should be asking is why does the EDL exist in the first place I mean why is it that these people feel so disenfranchised that they have mm. to look to the EDL rather than their local Labour councillors or, uh, or Liberal Democrat councillors or whatever party there is a deficit here in terms of representing what these people's views are whether or not you agree with them or not we live in a democracy the idea is that people are able to express their opinions whatever they may be <laughs> Precisely, that's fair enough. And, and as we said earlier on, there are people who have these concerns to a greater or lesser they're extent. They're these they're concerns they're that we've thrown our lives into. Remember, we're all volunteers. The English Defence League, we don't get paid for anything. There are legitimate Sh issues and they need to be discussed. What are those legitimate issues in your mind? There are legitimate, of course, there's legitimate issues on race, on immigration, mm -hmm. on all those issues. The, the, fa the point is, across Europe, mm -hmm. these issues are being manipulated by mainstream they're parties. Mm -hmm. They are being manipulated. There's, a, there's definitely an increase in far right activity. Yeah, in when Italy, you say far right, this is very dangerous. Of course, there needs to be a legitimate debate in this country. It needs to be an accurate debate. Let's talk accurately. Let's not stoke up hatred. Let's not <laughs> use misinformation. That's, that's, that's what would you like? What would you like? This is a, I think this yeah. is a really important yeah. question. What would you like the Muslim communities in this country? And they come in as many different forms. What would you like them to do? Integrate and assimilate. That's all we want. Integrate and assimilate. And how, what assimilate. does that mean for you? We want how do you and, and when you say you can't call everyone who opposes anything to do with Islam far right, it's not right. You can't what call you mean these by, people. Uh, uh, what do you mean by integrate class. and assimilate? Integrate how would that manifest? How would that look? Well, what I'd say is my mum different from now. My mum was an Irish immigrant to this country. Yeah. Well, if you go to Luton, half my best mates are West Indians. How come the Jews, the Sikhs, the Hindus, the West Indians? 
everybody is integrated. There's no problem. There's no commotion. You just spoke about two racist incidents last week. 38 girls on Friday in court in Oxford, 12 Muslim men and 38 children aged 11 to 14 are being abused and raped. But, but this listen, is, this sexual perverts academic. come in all races. But not in the same, not, not in the same organ. Oh, right, 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 yeah, okay. right, when are Muslims going to take to the streets in outrage against their fellow Muslims for what they're doing? Let's, be, let's be clear about two or three issues. Audiences the, the, in a minute. The, 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 first, the first issue is this. If there are criminals, they are criminals and their religion and their race and their ethnicity has got nothing no, to no, do with it. it. That no, is no. the first... No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. You've had a fair shout, you've had a fair shout. Secondly, secondly, within Islam we have women's rights, we have men's rights and we have rights for children. We are very moral and we are quite conservative on these issues, okay? Now, your idea of assimilation, I assume would mean that I shouldn't have a beard, wear a hat, or walk around no, in this robe. Is that right? right? No, it's not. And the same with the hijab. I'm, no one has no problem. You had a debate on here the other day where you are talking about the burqa. Why yeah. should the burqa be banned? Yeah. No one said what needed to be said. In my hometown, there's been four arms robberies by people wearing burqas. Right. That's enough of a reason well, okay. to ban What would you like Mo, for example, or Shaista, for example, to do? differently well, from what they're doing at the my, moment. My in what way would you like to, them to live my, their lives my differently? My work the Muslim Council of Britain, don't you? I, I, who, I, I who work are, with a number of different affiliated to the Islamic Forum of Europe. All these organisations that you work with, you're affiliated with, either, either drabble off money to charities that fund extremism or are Islamist organisations. That is, that is, so that is a slander like, and there's no evidence about that. So you're, now, not, you're, not, you're not affiliated so on page 22 of, of the Muslim Council of Britain with, with the Islamic Forum of Europe who are named as an Islamist organisation. Tommy, all, Tommy, the fact of the matter no, is right. that the government, this, this, right. this issue is about complacency with your organisation. Now, we can argue about what the definition of far-right and Nazism well, is, no, the fact but is we, not have, far right. we have, you we you have scholars and studies today saying that the rhetoric and the language used by your organisation is in How? parallel with the anti-Semitism no, 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 that came in the 1930s and before the Holocaust. Right. Let's, yeah, let's, 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 let's have another chance. You'll have another chance. Let me, <laughs> let me, well, I know you weren't a point about it. There was a lots of pro-Israeli flags at the demo yesterday, we which itself is an interesting we phenomenon. Well, this is an interesting development in the in the but well, go I, think on, the, I think the, I think the debates I think the debate's quite characteristic uh, of all of this. You know, I don't mm. think that the English Defence League is actually that big, and I don't think it's going to get hugely bigger. It does mm. represent a lot of grievances that people have, of course, and actually just the idea of getting out on the streets and actually doing something is quite appealing. But the fact is that the way that the media landscape has changed so much in the last five or ten years has meant that Tommy's always reading stories about Sharia law about to be introduced into Luton well, or anywhere else, and other, people, and other people are reading stories about the English Defence League, and it becomes very, very polarised very, very quickly. So because the English Defence League is predominantly an online organisation, they send each other links of stories and essentially whip themselves up constantly. Group, they get groupthink. Groupthink, and sort of yeah, based yeah. on some misinformation. Well, well, well. There's many of us that are guilty of, of groupthink. Let's uh, go on. It's very uh, unfortunate that the far right seem to be getting all the press when it comes to uh, criticism of Islam. I think there's a lot uh, that needs to be criticised in a free democracy about Islam um, generally, but of course Islamists in particular. But, and the, um, the main problems that I see are that embedded in Islamic uh, theology and uh, culture is the idea of jihad. And it's been going on for, a, you know, for 1,500 years. It's something, we are, something we've debated on many occasions. Yep. And quite Our rightly. question this morning, are we too complacent I think about we're too complacent. the far right? I think we're too complacent about the far right of Islamism. That is where I think we're complacent. Okay, gentlemen over there. Hello. Yeah. Um, um, I think um, politicians uh, sparked the fires. So Jack Straw, um, many of the politicians, mainstream politicians, they discuss issues like uh, grooming, uh, extremism, and these buzzwords. And you find that organisations like English Defence League just rally upon are those these particular not issues? ideas. There are definitely issues, but the fact is the way they're discussed by mainstream politicians. So the discussion about is are we too complacent? in um, tolerating the English Defence League. The fact is the public space has already been given to these organisations and the rhetoric spurred by politicians gives these movements fire and gives them credibility for no, their I arguments. Mean, for, uh, Mo, I just wonder what you think about this and I'll come to you, you guys in a minute and John Mann as well, the MP. Is it, is it good to have Mr Robinson on this morning so that we can examine and analyse and uh, assess what he's saying? Do you support that? Because you wanted to, to ban them at one stage, didn't you? Tommy, if you and your family ever want to come to meet my family for dinner, you are more than welcome. And you're well, more... Uh, uh, no, that's fine. Uh, 
and, and, and let, me, let me just finish. Let me just finish. Let me, let, is it right that they appear on the media and stuff like that? Right now, while we're sat here, most yeah. of us can hear outside the protests going on. I think it's important. Protests who attacked I think another lady. They attacked a lady. I th I another lady. Th look, look, look. That she yeah, got spat yeah. on by, the, by these. It was eight people. Winston Churchill said the future fascist will come under the Winston Churchill was a famous Islamophobe, actually, okay? Now, actually. Winston Churchill was what? That's famous. We'll sort it out next week's debate. Thank you very much. I think it's important. Right. I think that it's important <laughs> that you're here. Yeah. I think it's important we have a debate. I think it's important we have a discourse and challenge these things on the intellectual battlefield. What I do have a problem with is if the government decides that organisations who are not conducive to the public good, whether it all be al Mahajarun or Muslims Against Crusades, if the government decides to ban them, and actually I've got a bit of paper here, which is a copy of a letter I wrote to the Home Secretary, where I wrote to her, and, and James Brokenshire wrote back to me, and he said that they decided that they were not going to prescribe the English Defence League. Okay. Well, no despite the fact, us, despite the fact, just one in five members and of Anders Breivik in made it, in jail Anders for Breivik, terrorism. Anders Breivik made it very clear that he has influence and has links with, clear links Absolute. with the English Defence okay, League. Okay, I've got to answer that. On page 1438 of Anders Breivik's manifesto, he said the English Defence League is in fact anti-racist, anti-Nazi, and, and they are naive. Fools. And on 1242, and, and on page 1242, oh. he says he has come and met with. No, he's never met. And shared don't think, don't think the security service. Would, would, would have known. It's not, the problem I have is if, if 38 Muslim girls had been raped in the last well, few weeks, it's got nothing would to be, do with the country. Would be on fire. The country would be on fire. The country would be on fire. Wait a minute. The country would be on fire. These are our daughters. I'd like to ask you a question. And our daughters. Everybody's daughters. Shay's daughter. Shay's daughter. Our daughters are not being raped. Tommy. Excuse me. Tommy. You're making. You're making more noise than the lot I outside. Tommy. 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 And I'm sorry, that, that, but unfortunately that has actually been shown statistically. But well, I know the Asian communities are working with those men to, to, to sort those issues
thinking. It's now prohibited to even challenge certain basic things. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't agree with the way the debate's going. No, the law, in that the law makes I mean it the general clear, debate, the not the debate here. Clear what is lawful and what is unlawful. Under the, under the Prevention of Terrorism Act, okay, under Section 1 1, if you incite hatred, or you are, uh, give harassing, or you incite terror don't into a, a proportion of the population don't you think if I've been under under the under, under under Section 127 of the Communications Act, under the Public Order Act, the law makes it very very clear and distinct what is lawful and what is unlawful. And Mo, all we're talking debate, about is Mo, what is unlawful. Are you not suggesting by saying that we're being complacent that the EDL is an organisation that should be banned? Is that not no, what no, you're no, asking? No, 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 no. I think. So no, yeah, what, yeah, what do you well, think well, you is did complacency? You did have a complacency. You did have a Facebook petition, and of course, if they were banned or any organisation. Yeah. So there was an e petition. Right. Uh, that, that causes its own after, problems, after, doesn't after, it? After, 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 after Breivik killed virtually 100 people in Utoya, absolute, yeah, monster, absolute monster, who loved the EDL. No, he didn't love the EDL. He was a big fan of the EDL. He fools. He shared Let's get away from that point. We're not going to get anywhere on that. Right, Carry on. My, my point was he shared an ideology, and I thought if the government has decided that they will ban organisations who share an ideology with extremist organisations and no, extremist no, no. groups, the EDL have planted both feet over that line. Is it right? Is. Okay, is it right? This is the thing. Some people will be able to hear the shouting outside where we are today. Is that, are, are there some people actually on the, the left who are doing this, who are, who are entirely counterproductive, the far left? The, the, there are militant yeah. anti-fascists who but contribute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I'm wait. not a member of any Facebook group. No, on your Facebook Sorry. profile, you say your political views are left, far left, further left. What? No, I, don't. I say I'm a progressive. No, okay, left, let, far let, left, anyway, no, anyway, anyway the, point is, the point is, there are militant anti-fascists that in some towns and cities contribute to some of the yes. problems, and that is an elephant in the room that is often not discussed. Should the English Defence League be banned at present? No. I think the grievances that it's campaigning on and its supporters should be heard. But at some point, the organisation has to start taking some responsibility yeah. just for some misreporting, as do sections well, of do the British what? tabloid mm. media. And to the give rhetoric. you an example, to give you an example yeah, go on. this month, um, tabloid media reported that two-thirds of young British men um, endorse honour killings. The actual figure was 6%. They had to apologise, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, but yet the tabloid media will, will jump mm. on this and say, well, look at this, Muslims are incompatible with British society. You know, Actually, if we look beyond that and look at the actual data, it's, it's completely a different this, story. This, Matt, this, this European-wide movement, this you know, counter-jihadism, as it is called, uh, where's the money coming from? Where's the funding coming We've from? We've got no money. We've got no funding. We skip across them. Europe. Across Europe, I mean, if you look at, say, states like the, the Netherlands, Gert Wilders is, is privately backed, but mainly by funders in, in the United States. The United States, who are they? Others are, are political the parties. Well, well, I mean, individuals that are linked to, mm. to fundamentalist, radical ideologies, but others are political parties that are democratically registered. If the English Defence League goes into elections, and obviously we'll have to comply with electoral law. We've, um, yeah, yes, we, sir, you've had it hand up for ages. Tommy. Let's, yeah. get, let's get a microphone down. I would are you going to dinner like, as well? Sorry, oh, no, I would sincerely like to discuss two areas with you. Jihad, I've got a serious jihad, that's a struggle, and that is you. I want to sit down with you and let you know how much I contribute to Britishness and being Muslim Mate, in my society. Let, let, let me finish, 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 and contribute to my society as a Muslim because my religion asks me to do that and teaches me to do that. So please, take up my offer, let's sit down, have a coffee and have a chat. Whenever you want, mate, whenever you want. But there, on this debate, we'll leave it. Thank you all very much indeed for partaking in that debate. If you'd like to have your say about it, log on bbc.co.uk slash the big questions. You'll find links to continue the conversation online.